everybody. I have to be kind of quiet because my baby is sleeping in the car seat. But today I am going to go plant shopping with my mother-in-law. And then we were planning on going to lunch and then um, going to this nature preserve that's nearby. It's a local conservatory. There are lots of really cool tropical plants there, I think. So I figured it'd be fun to take you guys along with me as we just hang out for the day. It's kind of a gloomy fall day. It's the day before Halloween and apparently the trick-or-treating is happening tonight instead of tomorrow night in our city, even though it's October 30th. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's a Saturday and, and they don't want to have trick-or-treating on a school night, but I don't know. It's kind of weird. So I have to also prepare for that because I was planning on it being tomorrow and not tonight. I had no idea about that until later. So I don't know if I end up getting any plants. I don't know at what point I will be able to show them to you. It might not be until tomorrow or much later tonight. Um, just because I have stuff that needs to get done. So, but you can at least come with me right now and I'll show you um, this local nursery that I recently found that I really like and then this, the, the conservatory. Let's just go for it.
Hi guys, it's quite a bit later uh, in the evening. My baby is in bed and because of the trick-or-treaters, you know, I was passing out candy and pretty busy with that, but I feel pretty refreshed and the house is kind of relatively clean and tidy. So I figured it's time to finish out this video and show you what I got um, from the nursery this morning. And I hope that you enjoyed that walk through the conservatory. I know I did. It was a whole lot better than I actually expected it to be. I, I didn't really know what I was expecting, but my mother-in-law suggested that we go and I'm really glad that we did. It was very nice and warm in there and it's open all winter. So I'm definitely gonna take advantage of that and visit when I'm getting cold and just need a place with warmth and plants and sun. <laughs> anyway, I did end up getting three plants and one pot at the nursery today. I, I think I'm gonna tell myself that this is probably my last purchase before winter really sets in and I probably won't get anything the rest of the year, but you know, we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna try really hard to make that the case. The first thing I'm going to bring up is this philodendron heteracium lemon lime or lemon lime philodendron. People often just call it that because it's easier. Um, but this guy is already trailing. I think I selected one of the better plants that they had because, I mean, look at him. He's pretty happy. Some of his leaves are definitely kind of sun bleached and very pale, but like not in a good way. Like this one, for example, it looks a little bit splotchy and more bleached than anything. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but you know, you can take my word for it. But uh, I actually don't have one of these guys yet, even though I have, you know, philodendron micans and I have the regular old scandens or philodendron heteracium, Hartley philodendron. I'm just listing off all of the possible names. But yeah, that's just the regular green one. But I've been wanting one of these guys and I saw it for $11.99, which is the same price as the micans that I got uh, for a four inch pot from the same nursery. And yeah, I thought it was a good deal. And honestly, <laughs> I was really impressed with how orange peachy, like this orange peachy color of the petioles and stems. And especially as it's shooting off new growth, it just looks really cool to me. I didn't necessarily realize that lemon lime philodendron had that, but there you go. But yeah, I was looking for some plants that would sit a little bit lower and hang down for one of my plant shelves that I recently put up and this seemed like a really good fit. So I went with it. Next, I'm actually gonna talk about the pot that I got, which is this really cool pot. I don't know how well you can see it. Give you a second to take a look. It's actually quite heavy, but it's just a four inch pot cover pot really. I mean, I wouldn't plant something directly in here because it doesn't have a drainage hole, but it came with this little plastic thing to protect the ceramic, which is kind of nice. But yeah, this is some sort of, what's it called? Terrazzo? 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 I think it's just terrazzo pattern, you know, where it has all, all of these little shapes, like colorful shapes kind of embedded into concrete. Um, and I thought it was really neat. I know this was sort of a trend a couple years back, maybe in 2019, 2018 or so. But I still really like the look of it. And I, I don't know, I don't know if it's like completely out of style now and if it was just a 2010s thing, but I liked it. So I picked it up and I thought it was a, a fairly unique pot, but one that would fit my home nicely. And I'm considering putting one of the four inch plants that I got today into this just with the nursery pot in the cover pot, but I haven't really decided. I, I tend to move pots around a lot um, when I when they're just cash posed, so yeah. This next plant is a plant that I actually never really thought I was going to get. I saw it, I thought it was a good price and in good condition. And honestly, upon seeing it in person, I was kind of like, oh, okay, I guess it's pretty. That's the Cebu Blue Pothos also known as the Epipremnum panatum Cebu Blue. And 
it is an epipremnum or in that pothos family, although I know it's not actually pothos, it's epipremnum, but everyone knows it as pothos, so I say pothos. Um, but yeah, so it is part of that family, although if I were to compare it to, I think I have a jade pothos right behind me. This was just an old propagation that I did, so it's a small plant, but you know, maybe this isn't as good of an example, but this is just a jade pothos and it has broader leaves than the Cebu blue. And then the Cebu blue has these long, narrow leaves. I, I think the difference is more marked when it's a more mature plant. But from what I can see, I mean, there's definitely a difference. And also there's some very delicate veining on the leaves and the color does have a bluish hue to it. So it's pretty, I'll, I'll give it to you. And I'm, I believe, you know, if, if it grows and matures, it'll eventually get fenestrations, I believe. Most pothos or epipremnum would do that under the right circumstances anyways. But yeah, so from what I gather, this is kind of an unpopular opinion, but I kind of wasn't that into Cebu Blue when I first saw it. Um, and I still don't know if I am totally into it, but I figured I would give it a try and see if I fall in love with it. And so far, I, I am content with it. Um, I did get it for $14.99, which I know that they have some big baskets at Lowe's that sometimes drop here and there, which, you know, if you're lucky, you'll find that. But generally speaking, it is a slightly harder plant to find, uh, at least compared to a lot of other pothos. So I felt like it was a good price with that in mind. Um, so anyway, yeah, so hot take. I didn't really see the appeal. I much preferred things like Marble Queen Pothos, even like an Enjoy or, uh, I don't know, other hanging plants like a Philodendron Mykins. It just, I didn't, it didn't seem that special to me. And I don't know, like there is something very beautiful and elegant to it, but there seemed to be a huge hype around it that I was just kind of like, I mean, yeah, it's a vine with leaves and they're a slightly different shape than most pothos. And yeah, they have a bluish tint, but like, there's nothing else really to it, you know? But again, I might change my mind and I know that that could offend some people, I don't know. <laughs> so I think, I think I do like it, but it seems a little bit overrated. I hope I didn't hurt anyone's feelings. But again, I bought it, I like it, and maybe maybe I'll change my mind completely and I'll fall in love and yeah. Yeah, I bought it for a similar reason that I bought the philodendron. Uh, it was mostly because I wanted some plants that I didn't have that had a particular shape to them so that they would fit on a particular shelf. And those two plants actually kind of fit the bill perfectly in terms of the needs that they have and their shape, growth patterns, look, everything. It kind of works out well. So, okay, Liz, about this next plant. I caved and got a string of hearts, but it's not variegated. It's not the variegated one, even though I was seriously, I kept going back and forth and was like, I want to get that, but I didn't get the normal string of hearts either. No, I got the silver string of hearts or string of hearts, silver glory. Um, excuse me. Look at how beautiful she is. She keeps going. Yep. She keeps going. See? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> it was sort of the obvious choice. I know supposedly there's a, there's a debate as to whether or not the silver glory actually exists, but the leaf shape is slightly different. I mean, it's more the, the bottom, it's more apple shaped. It's not as pointed and that's pretty consistent for all of these leaves and they have that beautiful silvery color. So I believe that it's real, but I, I think the botanical name is Seropegia woodii or something like that or String of Hearts Sil Silver Glory. I did get it and I know, okay, I think there's, I swear there was a fungus net like in my face. Oh my gosh, it keeps psyching me out. But yeah, so I'm just 
I need to find a good place to put this plant. Here, I'll hold it here. This works. So listen, I know that I said that I was probably not gonna pick up a string of hearts like two weeks ago because my cats would destroy it and I didn't know if I had a good spot for it. And I think, so part of my hesitation comes from the fact that I've had a really bad experience with String of Pearls. And a lot of that was my own inexperience. I mean, last video talked about my plant journey and I just, I messed it up twice. And they're, I feel like they're really easy to screw up because if you don't put them in high enough light, you're kind of screwed. And I just didn't have high enough light for them. I didn't have a grow light either. But also I definitely overwatered it. You know, it's it's an easy plant to overwater if you're not careful um, about just really making sure that soil is bone dry before you water it again, at least in my experience. Like you have to watch for the pearls to get kind of wrinkly. So I know that now, but because I killed two of them, I'm just afraid to get more strings of things in general. I know they're not all 100% the same, but they are kind of similar in a lot of ways. So I was like, first of all, I, I felt kind of burned from the string of pearls. So I, part of me was like, I don't want to do it. Another big part of it was concerned about having the correct place for it and also my cats, but the last couple of weeks, I did a lot of thinking on the topic and I watched a lot of care videos. I was really chewing on it, ruminating on this decision and I decided, okay, I think I have a good spot where I can hang it in the guest bedroom by a west facing window. I don't allow the cats in my guest bedroom for a lot of reasons. There are lots of plants in there. There's some water propagations going that they like to knock down. And also the bedspread is white and one of my cat's fur is black and she sheds a lot, so you can imagine. <laughs> so for that reason, I tend to keep the door closed. And also it would be hanging up quite high right next to this west facing window where it would, it would get probably most definitely enough light, I, I believe, to if not thrive, at least grow and be pretty okay. So with all that in mind, I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna get a string of hearts. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get the regular one or the variegated one. I walked in there, saw the variegated ones, which were, you know, you could get a pretty good four, in, four and a half inch pot for like 30 bucks. And then they had some hanging baskets that were pretty short. I mean, they went down to maybe here uh, for maybe 35 or 40, I can't remember. You could get a two inch plug for $7. So I was like, oh. I don't know. I don't know if I want to cave on the on the variegated string of hearts yet because I don't have experience with a string of hearts at all and I want to make sure I know how to care for it and that I do well before spending that kind of money. So that was like, okay, well maybe I'll just get a string of hearts then. But then I turned the corner and I saw the Silver Glory, which normally goes for $24.99. And there was a big sale sign that said now $12.99, which was basically half the price almost. And then I was like, oh my gosh, $12.99 for this? And it's a silver glory, which is a pretty, I don't know. I, from I was doing a little bit of research and it seemed a little bit more difficult to find than your normal string of hearts. So I think I got a pretty good deal. And I still, while I was in the store, I still kept going back and forth, back and forth, because I think I do slightly prefer the look of the variegated string of hearts to this. But honestly, this might grow on me. Um, let's just give you a closer look. This really might grow on me, you guys. It's so much more silvery. The backs are more silvery than purple, which is kind of cool. Uh, it has a very cool tone to it. It's a really nice looking pot. So I'll keep you guys updated on how I do. I'm a little nervous, uh, but you know, I trust that I'm a good plant parent now. I've had my moments, but I think I've grown a lot ever since my string of pearls debacle. Debacle, I don't know, how do you pronounce that? Debacle, I think is what it is. My string of pearls debacle. So yeah, I mean, wish me luck, you guys. Three of hearts. I'm pretty sure that's all I really have for you guys. Well, I hope that you guys have a wonderful and blessed day. If you enjoy going on this little adventure with me, 
just comment down below what your favorite part was, what your favorite plant was that you saw at the nursery maybe. Um, I just love to hear from you guys. Please like and subscribe. That helps me a lot. I'm a pretty small channel at this point. Um, so literally every single like, every single subscriber, every little bit of interaction helps tremendously in getting my stuff out there so that more people can watch and enjoy. So thanks guys. Bye-bye.